In this video, I'll cover the tools in the Edit Shapes tool group Shape, Smooth, Smear, Twirl, Attract and Repel, Smudge, and Roughen. All of these tools are used to change an object's shape. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. The Edit Shapes tool group can be found just below the Pick tool in the toolbox. Clicking the small arrow in the lower right corner of whatever icon is displayed here opens the tool group flyout. I'll start with the Shape tool, which can also be activated with the F10 key on the PC and the A key on the Mac. For standard shapes, the Shape tool has specific functions. When I click a rectangle, nodes appear at each corner, and there are options in the property bar for corner editing. Dragging any corner nodes changes all corners, either as chamfered, scalloped, or rounded. Clicking a corner node before dragging affects just that corner. All corner sizes can be set, whether locked together or unlocked, in the property bar as well. Clicking an ellipse displays just one node. Dragging this node while the cursor is inside the shape changes the ellipse to a pie, and if the cursor is outside, an open arc is created. Ellipse types and angles can be set in the property bar. For a polygon, dragging a node creates the same change at all sides or points. Holding the control key while dragging keeps all segments even, otherwise the nodes can be dragged anywhere. And for a star, Nodes can be dragged to make star points more or less sharp. For text objects, the Shape tool places nodes on each character, which can be selected and dragged one at a time to move individual characters, change character fills, rotate, or change fonts. I can select multiple nodes to change multiple characters. Dragging the icon at the lower right corner changes character spacing, holding shift while dragging this icon changes word spacing, and dragging the icon at the lower left corner changes line spacing. The shape tool is also used for node editing on any curve, which provides enormous flexibility in creating the exact curve you want. A standard object, such as a rectangle or text, must be converted to a curve before its nodes can be edited, by selecting it with the Pick tool and clicking the Convert to Curves icon. Any objects created using any of the tools in the Curve Tools flyout, such as this Closed Bezier Curve or Open Pen Curve, are automatically ready for node editing. If a curve is already selected, then activating the Shape tool displays the nodes for that curve, and I can drag nodes to different spots. Clicking another curve displays that curve's nodes. Each curve has one arrow node that helps determine the start and end nodes of each segment, though direction can be changed with the Reverse Direction icon. To change a line segment to a curve, I'll select its end node and click Convert to Curve. Now I can use the arrows at both segment end nodes to adjust the curve tangency. Dragging a marquee selects all nodes inside the marquee, and I'll change these segments to curves. Nodes at the end of curves can be changed into three different types of nodes. A smooth node makes a smooth transition between segments, and I can adjust the tangency arrows on either side with different distances from the node, while the transition always remains smooth. A symmetrical node also remains smooth, and the tangency remains the same on either side. With a cusp node, tangency can be different on either side, resulting in a sharp corner. While one or more nodes are selected, clicking Stretch or Scale Nodes produces handles I can use to move the nodes by dragging a corner or middle handle. With Rotate or Skew Nodes, I can use corner handles to rotate the selected nodes and middle handles to skew them. I can use the Select All Nodes icon and enable the Reflect Nodes Horizontally and Vertically icons. Now when moving a node, a mirrored move occurs on the opposite side. By default, Moving a node doesn't affect tangency of neighboring nodes, but in elastic mode, the segments act as rubber bands when stretched. Double-clicking along a segment adds a node, double-clicking a node removes it, and if I marquee select multiple nodes and click Add Nodes, I can create intermediate nodes. 
And if I want linear segments instead of curves, I can select nodes and convert curve segments to lines. The other shape editing tools in the flyout provide different methods of node editing. The Smooth tool is used to remove jagged edges or sharp corners by brushing away or removing nodes. For this tool and the others, the nib size can be set in the property bar or changed by dragging the mouse left or right while holding the shift key. I can also adjust the rate of applying the effect, either in the property bar or by holding the alt key while dragging left or right. These tools also have a pen pressure icon, which can be enabled by tablet users. I'll click the shape to smooth, which displays its nodes, drag over the edges, and repeat as needed to get a more smooth, organic looking shape. Increasing the nib size and dragging repeatedly increases the smoothing effect. In this example of text that was converted to curves, the Smooth tool can be used to gradually remove the serifs to give the curves a hand-drawn look. With the Smear tool, I can shape an object by pulling out extensions along its outline, and these extensions narrow toward their ends. I'll click the ellipse and start with a large nib and smooth smears, then use a smaller nib, higher pressure, and pointy smears. Dragging from inside the shape pulls out extensions, Dragging from outside creates indentations. The Twirl tool adds a swirl effect to outlines. I can click and hold without moving the mouse to add a static swirl, or click and drag to pull the swirl outward. Swirls from the Twirl tool can be clockwise or counterclockwise. Attract and Repel can either drag nodes toward the cursor or push nodes away. The Smudge tool is similar to Smear, but keeps extensions and indentations at a uniform thickness depending on the dryout value. A positive dryout narrows the effect, and a negative dryout would widen it. Roughen adds spikes to an outline, and dragging over more than once randomizes the spikes. Finally, a shape editing tool can only be used on one curve at a time, but I can get around this by using groups. With the Pick tool, I'll hold the Shift key while selecting all three ellipses, then click the Group Objects icon. Now when I use the Smear tool, the entire group is included. This brings us to the end of the Edit Shapes tools in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.